this is Madden 19. I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what should be an intriguing matchup between the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons. With that, let's get up to Atlanta. We're standing by at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. A moment ago, here was the scene. The Falcons coming out from their tunnel to the roar of all the folks here in Atlanta. They're ready for football as these Falcons get set to match up with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. The children will grow, and it's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out now comes Matt Ryan to lead this Atlanta Falcons offense. And week one, tough loss at Philadelphia, 18-12. Of course, Charles, they had the chance late. Matt Ryan also threw an interception around the goal line prior to that. Not his best performance. Never easy against the defending Super Bowl champs, especially when they're opening at home. But you're exactly right. For some reason... His homecomings have been fraught with disaster. One in five in his career in his return to Philadelphia. He went to school, what, about 10 miles outside of Philadelphia? Yeah, William Penn High School. He's from Exton, PA. But once again, as you said, the homecoming got spoiled. Now a play fake here on first down. And he finds a man with a crossing route. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. And even 20 yards at a first down on the game's very first play. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to Talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And oh, right away, he lost the football. when the ball comes free it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback the ball gets away from him everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense they're usually looking in the other direction downfield or have moved away from him in this case though a teammate is able to come up with the ball The start less than ideal as they already face a second and long. To throw is Ryan. Finding some room at midfield. And finding the tight end Hooper. That one good for 17 as they're set up better now for third down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Ryan now to throw on third down. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Cameron Jordan in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Jordan coming off a Pro Bowl campaign in 2017, third time he's had that honor. And he continues to play better and better as his career extends. Think about it this way. Fourth in the league last year in sacks with 13. Helped the New Orleans Saints defense improve overall and helped lead them to the playoffs. And now he shares Pro Bowl honors with his father, Steve, who was a Pro Bowl tight end in the NFL. 
On fourth down, here's Matt Bosher on to punt. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Time to focus on Drew Brees in this New Orleans offense. And you probably would have figured that 40 points in that week one game against Tampa Bay would have been enough, but that was not the case. Brees was, he was really good, though, in the loss. 37 to 45, 439 yards and three touchdowns good. There's no doubt. And you're right, 40 points should have been enough to get the job done. The problem for the New Orleans Saints, they were chasing the entire game. Tampa Bay set such a pace and created such a wide gap that even to chew up some of that gap and get close, it's just too much heavy lifting. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Ready. 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 They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Camara, by the way, he's the guy in the backfield right now because Mark Ingram is out for weeks one to four, but that didn't appear to be a problem in week one. How many backs do you know that really mind carrying the load? Uh, zero. All right, <laughs> and they'll say they miss their partner and they can't wait for him to get back, but in the meantime, they'll take every carry and catch they can get, and Alvin Kamara is no different. 141 yards of total offense, three touchdowns. They'll split the carries when Ingram gets back, but in the meantime, Kamara says, just give me the ball. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. You know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to see. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. Shotgun now for Breeze. And that's complete. It's Watson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. And they get 10 yards there and convert on third. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What did the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Ready! Ready! On first and ten, here's Breeze. This is a catch by Ted Ginn. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Partney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. From the gun, it's Breeze. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he's brought down. That's 30 yards now in the last two plays, back-to-back 15-yarders, -back and they're rolling. Speaking of Michael Thomas, no receiver had a bigger afternoon than him in week one, albeit Charles in a losing effort. The guy put up a big, big game. I mean, he got targeted 17 times. His catch percentage, off the charts, because he had 16 catches. 180 yards and a touchdown. And he's one of those uber-confident receivers, which I guess that kind of encapsulates pretty much all of them. But I love his social media handle. Can't go right. Now Breeze. And Thomas has it. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. And yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. On 
First down, Breeze. But it's caught on the right side at Smith. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 11 more on that one and another first down. Well, they're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in with in the production meeting with them to talk about this and, hey, you know, how are you guys going to come out of the gate? I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't I, seem to I want it. I didn't offer mine. You, know, you, were, you were the <laughs> smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. A hey, first opportunity upcoming in the red zone for the Saints. They've got a first and 10 at the 11. Now a pitch out to Kamara. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Alvin Kamara really settling into the league in his second season. And, of course, he came out of Tennessee, but not a lot of people remember he started at Alabama. He did and got caught in that big mix of running backs at Bama. And they like those bigger, thicker runners, those guys who can break down defenses through the middle. Alvin Kamara ended up leaving Alabama, going to a junior college for a while. I believe he went to Hutchinson, Hutchinson. Junior College before matriculating at Tennessee and finding his way to the NFL, where he is now a star. Delay of game, offense. And that'll set him back five. Still second down. They are pushed back five yards by the delay of game, second and eight. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. So third and inches, and this will be the ninth play of the drive. Delay of game, offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still third down. So third and inches, and this will be the ninth play of the drive. Ready. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. Chance is good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. Now Will Lutz, who went to college a stone's throw from here at Georgia State, comes on for the field goal attempt. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Lutz's kick is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six?
Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. So out come the Falcons now. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. From the gun, it's Ryan. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And here are the Falcon offensive starters. And one of my favorite players in the league is Devontae Freeman. 29 rushing touchdowns the last three years. He knows how to put the ball in the end zone, can catch it out of the backfield, and plays with a passion that few players in the league can match. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again, Ryan. Flushed out right, and he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. And here now, New Orleans defensive unit. When you draft drafted 12th overall, people expect big things out of you, and Sheldon Rankins can provide that. Big, strong, physical player, has excellent quickness, and is really good with his hands, keeping blockers off of him and allowing him to get upfield and into opposing backfields. The Saints with an extra defensive back here on third on the field. Could they blitz? From the shotgun, Ryan. He completes it to Julio Jones. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. First catch so far for Julio. He's got a first down. And that's the connection, Ryan to Jones, that this defense obviously has to key in on. Certainly feels like they got the party started with that one, doesn't it? And when those two get in sync, it just scares the heck out of defenses because he can hit Julio Jones in a short zone, and he can take it the whole way. Completion good for three, and it's second down. Speaking of Julio, he had a big game week one, 169 yards, but in the end, almost had that play to win it, but he did not. That's probably what's going to stick with it. What was it that was said a long time ago by a former Major League Baseball Hall of Famer? It's deja vu all over again. Mm, yeah. But that's what it felt like. It looked like almost the exact same play. It felt like the same end zone. This time, instead of the ball going through his hands, came down a few feet out of bounds. But there's just something about Julio Jones in the red zone that the Falcons have to figure out if they want to get back into their winning ways. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Four down, four down. Check. Ready. New ready. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that'll bring up fourth down. Well, he had two sacks earlier. Now he has four total tackles for a loss after that play. Well, they obviously have to do a better job trying to block him. But short of that, you know what the quarterback has to do? Make sure he doesn't hand it to him when he's back there, thinking he's one of his own guys. His quickness, his suddenness, his speed getting into the... Oh, here's pressure, and the Saints block it. 
Uh, so much for pinning him really deep. Short punt could have pinned him inside the 10. Now great field position the other way. It's never good when you're punting the ball and your eyes see the ball go back behind you. <laughs> no. However form, whether it's over your head or to the side, never good. Now it becomes a race to get to the football so they don't pick it up and take it all the way. New Orleans coming back onto the field. And an interesting note is we were looking over some of the stats from week one. You know, the Saints have now lost five straight season openers. That's almost... I don't even know how to describe that. That doesn't even sound right. Because it's not like they've had teams near the bottom of the NFL. You know, you look and, and why, okay? Well, they have allowed quarterbacks to throw 14 touchdowns and no interceptions in those games. Previously, I understood it. No one struggled on defense, but I thought last year was a breakout for the stop troops. They reverted back to form in this game and to start 2018. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Let's get a quick look at the Saints offense. And we'll see the second half of their dynamic duo in the backfield, and that's Alvin Kamara, who in 2017, the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. How about this? Over 1,500 total yards and 13 total touchdowns in a debut performance. Here we go. Expect more of the same and probably a little bit extra. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Ready? Now Breeze, throwing the out route incomplete. That's Watson, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. This defense for the Falcons took a big hit in week one. Keanu Neal, their Pro Bowl safety, first-round draft pick in 2016, torn ACL against the Eagles. That is a devastating blow for the Atlanta defense because Neal is used in so many different ways. Close to the line of scrimmage, almost an extra linebacker, back deep in coverage, can cover inside against the slots and the tight ends. So DeMonte KZ, a second-year player, he's going to try and fill his shoes, a former cornerback in safety in college himself. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. to throw, it's Breeze. And that one is incomplete. And it also concludes quarter number one. So we'll get a second and goal when we come back. It's the Saints in the lead early here. The NFL on EA Sports continues right after this message. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Breeze now. On the check down, he finds Kamara. They'll wind up getting seven on the completion, but they'll still be faced now with a third and goal situation. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Throwing now is Breeze. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash and a bit of a tight angle. And luck. 
Bucks puts this one through. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So scores on their first two possessions, but 6-0, so field goals, probably not what they were hoping for. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. Not what they were hoping for, but they should be happy that they have points on the board. It almost feels like that old slow and steady wins the race, doesn't it? In this case, though, they want to be slow and steady now, but get explosive later and put the points up on the board. the main field goal Lutz to kick it away on the return here's Justin Hardy and he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23 yard line here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here Falcons up now, first and 10 at their own 23. And the drive starts with a handoff to Coleman. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Demario Davis there on the stop. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. They go play action here on first down. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away. But it does get away at its second down. A CD looking back to last week, one interesting thing certainly was that tie between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. You know, that was the first week one tie since 1971. Yeah, I think our research told us that the Broncos and Dolphins tied 10 to 10. And remember, overtime was instituted by the NFL starting with the 1974 season. So this is unbelievable, those two teams tied. Cleveland was plus five in turnover margin, had their chances, and got a field goal blocked down the stretch that would have won the game. Yeah, Pittsburgh had a field goal late in OT2, and they missed it wide left. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Falcons on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Ryan now off the bootleg. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Matt Bosher now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. 
The Saints coming out now to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at the 20. They begin on the ground with Camaro. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Off the play fake to Kamara. It's Breeze. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Marie's now on first down. Complete to Watson, the tight end. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. A gain of six there on first. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. On the counter, here's Camaro. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, they can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Here's Breeze to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. Rush coming, and he's taken down. A.J. Klein in from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Out of the gun, 
it's Ryan. The throw to the left side caught by Coleman. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. It's a gain of nine yards. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. Pulled in at the 24. Now a hit and a loose football. And that's what friends are for. <laughs> As the returner, you know who you're buying dinner for later. Oh, without a doubt, because he just took care of you and your team in a big way. You know, you turned it over there. That's a big momentum changer and put your defense in a bad spot. A good starting spot for the Saints as they come up first and ten. Ready. Breeze now to throw. And Josh Hill has it. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ready. Ended up making Ready. a nice play, even though it was complete. To throw is Breeze. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Michael Thomas, 51 yards. And the Saints are able to strike quickly for six. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed limits <laughs> out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Will Lutz on for the point after. Lutz with the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Pretty clean and simple there, just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Lutz now to kick this one away. Now Hardy on the return. It'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. 
Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 24. Off the play fake. Here's Ryan. Over the middle. That's caught yeah. by Ridley. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 15 yards through the air and a first down. They were in zone defensively. Went with a crossing route. It's always interesting to watch that chess match. Yeah, and I think safeties don't mind crossing routes against zone because eventually you're going to run into their territory. And that's when they lick their chops in order to get the big hit or a play on the ball. Offensively, nice execution to find a hole, make the catch. This is Freeman on first and 10. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. They go play action now. Ryan. And that is incomplete here. He was looking for Mohamed Sanu there. And it's third and four. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. They haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force the completion. The Falcons on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. scrimmage and he goes down right there officially no gain on the play and it's second down that didn't appear to be a run blitz he just darted in once he saw the run develop that appeared to be a case of see ball get ball on second down here's Ryan and his throw is going to be incomplete well, one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they yeah. haven't had much success on the scoreboard. The Falcons on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. From the shotgun, Ryan. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. 
Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. The Falcons will call on Matt Bryant for the field goal try. This officially a 55-yard attempt. to the right and this score will stay right where it is well this winds up an empty possession everything looked okay he just never got the ball on target and knowing him he'll be disappointed with that effort now we'll see what michael thomas and the rest of the offense has in store here he's already approaching 100 yards and has the touchdown i'm sure on that opposite sideline right now they're scratching their heads saying all right what do we do and the hard part is, even if you limit him to a short catch, he has that make-you-miss ability right. to take it for big yardage and put in the end zone again. So trying to blanket him is very difficult, but ultimately, you've got to find a way to put him on the ground, tackle him, and he doesn't make that easy. And they're struggling with that so far. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to Atlanta right after this timeout. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coach's two-minute drill. three yards on the catch it's third down and when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play he can hurt you downfield he reads defenses so well doesn't he he really does and the best part about that play for him i don't think that was his primary target i don't think so either. i think he had the read figured out where the blitz was coming from and went to a secondary target for a really nice game The Saints on third down, two for five to this point. Here it's third and three. Shotgun now for Breeze. That's complete to Meredith. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action.
Breeze now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. Hey, yellow lady. Breeze to throw again. Caught on the left side by Gann. They'll get to him just inside the 15-yard line. And even after that fancy footwork we saw, a good job defensively to recover. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now, Breeze again. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. Enough takes to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze, and the Saints up against it here. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. It's brought in right side by Ginn. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the right hash, this from 33. And Lutz's kick is good. And that's going to make this a 16-0 ball game. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, He's still been able to come over points due to his leg. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. Now Hardy on the return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. 
All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Set now to go for the third quarter. The Saints have the lead and set to receive the kick. And here's Lewis. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive. Is it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there Brady. on the brink, aren't they? Breeze now on first down. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That throw good for four. It's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was affected, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Ready. Yellow lady, yellow lady. Ready. Here's Breeze to throw. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away, and now it's third. The Saints on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and six. Watch it. You waiting? Watch it. Waiting. Watch it. From the gun, it's Breeze. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Breeze on the hookup to Thomas for the New Orleans first. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Play fake here on first down. All incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Uh, switching gears for a second because you were talking earlier. It's some odd games in week one. I don't think anything, though, takes the cake quite like that game in Miami. How about that lightning delay? Multiple lightning delays. Yeah, when you open up the season in the state of Florida, and it's not a dome. Good luck. You've got a chance of this happening, right? It happened in Tampa a couple of seasons ago, maybe a couple of times if I remember correctly. This game wound up taking seven hours and eight minutes to finish when all was said and done. Normally, we do a game in three and a half or less. That's unbelievable. So great stamina for the fans, great stamina for the players, and how about our colleagues in the announce booth? Great stamina for them as well. Indeed, longest game in NFL history. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. From the gun on third down, Breeze. 
And this is going to be incomplete. Solid coverage on the play by Devondre Campbell. So it looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? And I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the latter 50%. They begin the drive with Coleman. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. They will run again with Coleman. And he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage with a penalty flag down. This might push him back further. Holding offense. So on the big tight end, holding. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The Falcons on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This will be third and 15. From the gun, Ryan. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Another drive comes and goes, still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. But you just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. Here's Matt Bosher now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. <laughs> 47 yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Now we'll see what Michael Thomas and the rest of the offense has in store here. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Here's Breeze. Finds his man. Watson over the middle. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Oh 
Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Breeze leaves this one with Camaro. And to the 42-yard line here and blocked down there. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. midfield and inside the 45. That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. And defensively they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Breeze now, perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven, it's first and 10. To throw, it's Breeze. Thomas has got it, complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. On first and 10, here's Breeze. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Watson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. I'd have to say they're feeling like they are in rhythm right now. Things are in sync, aren't they? Team's winning, got a nice little margin on the scoreboard, completing some passes, and they just completed another one for a first down there to the tight end. He's going to come up here first and 10 and he's four for four now throwing the ball to start the drive a 10th carry for Camara. oh and now he bowls him over 10 more there and another first down for a lot of guys playing this game there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle he's able to lower his center of gravity and turn his legs for a really nice pickup this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone and it brings up second down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Now Breeze. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Five yards that time on the completion. And now it's third and goal. The Saints on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This is third and goal. 
To throw is Breeze. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. So they'll turn to the kicker again. He's been a busy man thus far. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Lutz puts this one through. And that will stretch the lead to three scores now at 19-0. So making four out of four now in the field goal department, and he's able to extend their lead. When drives are bogged down, he's been automatic out there. So nice to have a kicker you can count on to put points on the board. the made field goal Lutz to kick it away this will be taken to the back of the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field these guys had to punt last time it has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far they haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. second down couldn't connect now it's third they have not gotten him going at all tried to spark something there with a longer throw unable to complete it but you have to keep trying he's one of their best playmakers no matter what it says on the scoreboard you're always trying to get him the football the falcons on third down they've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far here it's third and two they'll run it now out of the gun and he's going to have the first down at about the 38. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Well, they certainly have been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just to pin their ears back and get after him now. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard. You probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. On second down, here's Ryan. Swings it out to the flat for Freeman. And he's brought down. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. 
That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. From the shotgun, Ryan to the sideline. And wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. It'll be a two-yard gain, and it's a second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. There's a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. Again, Ryan. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. That one goes for 24 yards. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Holding offense. They were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You should got to pick up a holding call. Get out. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. They go play action here on first down. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Demario Davis able to get in and bury him well behind the line for a loss of 17. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. the sack oh they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town it's second and a country mile now ryan gonna give it to freeman and he'll get inside the 40 to maybe the 38 yard line give him two on the run they need a lot more than that coming up here on third down not too many offenses want to turn down long drives but when you're down what they are They've got to pay it off with some points. The Falcons on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This will be third and forever. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Falcons. They'll have the football, but trailing on the scoreboard as we get set to begin the fourth. The Falcons on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This will be third and a mile. From the gun, it's Ryan. He's going to air one out. This is caught. It's Sanu this time for a Falcon touchdown. Mohamed Sanu, 38 yards. And the Falcons get a bit closer. The fly route works for the TD grab. And you know what the receivers love to 
say, if we get even with the defender, we're leaving. And that's exactly what he did all the way into the end zone. And then he was on the business end catching it once he got over the strike. Now Matt Bryant on for the point after. Bryant's extra point up and good. And they're able to cut this deficit down to 12. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And the Falcons score to cap it off. Here's Bosher to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Now we'll see what Michael Thomas and the rest of the offense has in store here. And the stats on his game, they really tell the story. A strong start. I don't know that the defense has really changed a whole lot as opposed to maybe just sticking to that game plan and shutting him down now. I like where you're going with that because normally we talk about adjustments and drastic changes in a game plan in order to shut someone down. But in this case, maybe they're just sticking with what they worked on all week and they're just making better plays. And so far, they've got to like what they've been doing in the second half. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 23. Give. This is Kamara. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Ricardo Allen, the safety, makes the stop. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Now Breeze on third down. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, New Orleans. Ted Gann, 73 yards. And the Saints add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning? Right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Lutz will look to add the extra point. Lutz good on the extra point. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown.
Lutz now to kick this one away. Now Hardy on the return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And here now come the Falcons. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. On first down, Ryan. That's caught over the middle. Hooper. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Operating from the gun, Ryan. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. The Falcons on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. They're up against a third and one situation. Here's Ryan to throw. And that is incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. They'll run it with Coleman. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. But no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. I tell you, a fourth and one when you're way back on your side of the field, I thought this might just be an attempt to draw them off and get the first down that way. But they were going for it the whole time, and they wind up getting it. intended receiver and that'll bring up second down i'm not even sure i know who this guy is out there playing right now this is very unlike him one of the most accurate guys in the league totally off his game right now i don't know i was going to ask you what you pin it on but defensively they've been pretty solid but sometimes you know those defenders they get into the receivers pretty well and if they chip away at their timing it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well Not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. situation in this case though i think he's got to make a decision he's taking a pretty good beating out there yeah with the deficit maybe not wanting to risk an injury let's go 
They're already slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Looking deep for Julio. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. Dan Quinn's guys unable to come through there on fourth down. And the Saints are going to get it back and in great shape. Well, apparently they weren't interested in playing the field position game. They opt to keep their offense out there. A big mistake in hindsight. Yeah, that one backfired in hindsight's always 20-20, but let's call it what it was. We would have first guessed that one and said, don't do it here. Bad situation. I think they need to be closer to midfield before I would start to think it was a good idea. Yeah. And once you start taking risks like that, you're going to have to keep taking them throughout the game, especially when they don't work. Yeah, at this stage of the second half, interesting. down carry it's Camara and he'll get four here down to the 35 yard line we got three three down three down hey fellas we got three let's go now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here grind out some yardage work on that clock see if you can continue to tick it down definitely you want to bleed things out at this point right continue to possess the football gain some yardage and put the onus on the defense do they have to use timeouts what are they going to do to stop you you take the charge on second down Camara and this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Ready? 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 Here's Breeze to throw. It's brought in right side by Ginn. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. A good pick up there, a 22. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. forward here for a modest game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Good gain there on first down. That keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay there. They're not in any rush offensively. Running with Camaro. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Now Breeze. And they get the football, but not much on the return here as he stopped at the seven-yard line. Their passing game has been spectacular this afternoon. Finally, a win for the defense. You think maybe there was an adjustment there. Finally gained a measure of... I don't know if you call it revenge, but got a play done against him, and that's been difficult for them all game long. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, 
that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. After the interception, here's Ryan. This one caught by Ridley and able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. That was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. been a tough one for this offensive line it appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game the way they've been pushed around six sacks given up in this one so that complicates things a bit here 18 yards to go now on second down Operating from the gun. Ryan throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, Ryan. And some room to roam now. And down he'll go at the 25. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. Picked off by a former first round pick. Robinson and his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there was the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the ending, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, 
that does him no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeout in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. That he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. second and nine they tried a quick hitter inside but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through didn't happen on that play Camara, and he stopped immediately there no gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Play was stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to them the rest of the game. On third down, here's Camara. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Call it a gain of four, and it'll bring up fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New Orleans. It's great to win at home in the NFL. When you win on the road, it's a little extra special, isn't it? It is because, let's face it, in most cases, you're not expected to go on the road and win in the National Football League. It just doesn't usually compute. So to get out there, get that done, and then head back to your city with one in, your, in the victory column, oh, that's a fantastic feeling. 
That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long, everybody.